So today's session, we're going to talk about the working with the trail power uh, physical architecture model. So when we talk about the physical architecture, now we're actually talking about how the system is going to be implemented. So it's actually, uh, I'm going to go through this, I'm going to go through it in three parts, and we'll talk about each part separately, uh, but we'll do it all in this one video. Okay, so part one basically is the node PC diagram, or in the physical connections. Uh, so we'll walk through uh, what that looks like and how that is different than what you may have what we saw in the logical architecture. Uh, we'll, we'll understand how the simplicity of the logical architecture grows to show the complexity of the physical components. Understand how the physical components can be composed of other components, and understand that the interfaces between the components can be represented with component exchanges at physical links and nodes. So let's jump over and we'll do that, and we'll come back and uh, do the later parts with slides also. So I'll go ahead and I'll open up the trail power model like we had before. Uh, open the project and open up the ARD file uh, to launch the session. And we'll see um, the familiar method phases here. So we'll go to the physical architecture phase and we'll see that we have uh, diagrams here for the physical architecture. Uh, you'll see that we have multiple physical architecture diagrams. And the first one I'm going to open up is basically the, the, the one with the physical nodes of the system. Now, with the physical nodes, I'll scale this slightly here to the page. Uh, now, the physical nodes are basically starting to represent actual things that are going to be in the design and that you're going to be designing as part of your system. You'll see here that we've now gone to uh, the point where we have a telemetry box. Uh, we've got a, a charger box that's actually going to be a physical component, the charger box. And inside of that, there's going to be a, a boost module and you've seen in the previous that we actually had an idea of what the boost would look like. We have a charger indication board that's going to be developed and that's actually going to be a PCB board. Uh, we've got a battery holder, we've got fuses, and we can actually start now keeping track of what these things are going to be. I can double click on it and, it's, and show that, oh, well this is a charger indication board and I actually can set here, that's, that's an element of hardware. I can go over to the boost here and I can say, Yep, it's an element of hardware, so I can put it, and I can actually add descriptions of what things are going to be as I'm going through the design of the system. You'll see here that I have a 18650. I even identified that the type of battery that I'm going to be using in the system. Uh, so I can start adding that. Here you can see a USB cable. That's part of it, so that's how I'm going to connect the USB device to the charger box, boxes through this cable. You'll notice that I actually have started to uh, have links, and these are called physical... Uh, physical links that connect the system and the physical links can be both uh, like a manual or UI like a, a like basically something that you would observe so this is the this link here between the user and the lights is just the lights that it gives off the lighting uh, but that's the physical link that something that somebody would observe and see uh, you'll see a couple of the links here have been basically made darker they're actually representing uh, these pathways the physical pathways this is something you might do so that I don't, so I'm basically going to say I'm, you know, when I do this, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail of what a USB cable does. So I'm basically made this pathway that connects the, through the, the system. And pathways are pretty easy to correct, create. You can just basically do this and you can create this physical path that basically is a, a path that basically uh, avoids things. So if you wanted to have a pathway, let's say, uh, through multiple components, you could do that. And that's what I did here is I basically create, selected this object and this object, and I created a physical pathway called a USB cable. Now, all these objects are very much from the physical perspective of the problem. They, they will end up, though, holding behaviors of it. And you can see here there actually is a physical connection, and there's also an object that represents the ports for these physical connections. Think of them as kind of the connectors or the connection uh, point to them. So you can get into even details up to that degree in this physical model. Uh, in this one here, I, I do have things like the solar cell, and you can see that there's lots of information in this model around each of these objects that aren't being displayed. But this is just a nice view to kind of show people what the breakdown of the physical components are of the system. I'm going to close this one. I'm going to open up another view that actually has some graphics added to it. And this is not a this is not uncommon that you would do that. That you'd start adding some pictures to a, a particular view like this to kind of show people what you're thinking and what you're laying out and how you're going to basically build it. In this case, the charger indication board. This shows a, a picture of it actually after it's been created. 
This was something that we actually saw in a previous diagram, what the boost component was. There's a picture of the solar cell. So you can use this to help communicate to people what your physical system is going to be. So now we're basically going to go into kind of the next part of the discussion. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we call the behavior components, the, you know, and that's what the PC stands for, and so behavior physical components. We're going to add that to uh, this diagram that's in the physical architecture. And when we do that, we'll see how that kind of looks. So with the physical behavior components now added, I'll bring in the behavior nodes. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually adding in behavior nodes of things that are going to have behavior. And basically behavior, I mean functionality. And it's a collector for it. Now many of these behavior nodes are can be traced back to the logical architecture that contained functions. So in here I'm going to have the boost uh, behavior. I'm going to have one for the charger indication board. And you can see there's lots of information uh, populated inside that boost. These are the functions that the boost performs. This is the functions here. You can see that they're but this again kind of shows what things are going to have behaviors and what things aren't. And in this case, I'm not going to have one for the USB cable. It's really not that complicated. You know, everybody kind of knows what the USB cable does. It can be, uh, and same thing here, I'm going to do the antenna, the Wi-Fi router, and the internet. That basically is used to connecting this photon particle device that's basically going to be used for the, for the interface for the developer. I'm going to use this photon particle and this is going to be the flow to basically get information to uh, the thing speak cloud that basically you use to monitor the device. So you can see here that you know we've gone from a fairly simple logical model that we showed in the last presentation to a much more complex model now of what the various components of the system are uh, that are being implemented. So now I'm going to basically go to the next step in the last part of the kind of the discussion here. Uh, the last part is look at the deploying the functions to it. So now we have behaviors. Behaviors are mapped to the various components. Now we're actually going to deploy the functions. And the functions now are get back to that functional chains that we had in the past. So there will be functions that map to each of the functional chains uh, that we had in the logical architecture to implement the system. So now we're actually taking the functionality that came all the way from those capabilities of the system uh, analysis. Uh, those capabilities implemented as, as system functions now are being now implemented, that were then implemented as logical functional chains, are now going to be implemented as physical functional chains. So I'm going to go and open up a diagram that has some of the functional chains. And here's, here's a complete one with all the various functional chains depicted. And as you can see, it gets, it gets started to get pretty complicated. So this is where, again, you might want to clone views to basically give you what you want to see. So you can see subsets of the functionality. I'm going to basically just reset this page size here. And we can see that we have the charge USB device. You can see the charge flow going through the red and going all the way down into the batteries, coming back up through the boost, you know, from the solar cells into the charger indication board, down into the batteries and the fuse and then into the batteries, up into the boost components, all the way back out to the USB device. So that's a charge flow. We still have the connect USB and the uh, flow here for connecting the device. We have the provide 24 hour visibility. So you can see that the lighting harness and its function of, of providing light is provided there and where that comes from in the charger indication board. We can also see that the monitor remotely functionality is being delivered from over here from this side. Now we'll, we'll go in and take a look at things a little closer. That's one of the things, yeah, as you're getting into this, you'll see that there's a lot of complexity going on. And let's go take a, take a look at just some of that. So I could go in here, for instance, and open up the solar cell. So here's a very simple flow here that shows the solar cell. It's a subset of the functionality. I have the sun that produces the light. And then I have the solar cell that converts the light to the power as you can see here. And then I have the uh, charger indication board that, that converts it to, basically to a voltage level that we're getting that we're, as we're going through. You'll see here, here's the functional flow, and the functions are mapped to the components. So basically, I open up the component flow, and you see here that there's an allocated functional exchange, and that's what this function is now mapped to this component exchange. And then likewise, there's a physical change that's going to implement that component flow. 
Uh, here's a more of a typical view from inside the, the system here. Uh, you know, going from a function to function, you see that the power is going through this little interface of the component flow connection, which then goes through this physical flow connection. Now you can have multiple functions flowing through one component flow, and you can have many component flows uh, connected to one physical exchange. Now, the interesting thing, why do you have physical exchanges versus com you know, component exchanges? Well, think of the component exchanges as kind of the exchange of the functional information, whereas the physical exchange is the physical media that you're exchanging it. So it is the cable, the connections, the wire harness. It's the physical way that it's getting that information across. And so that this dependency of connections between this dependency really is important because if I lose this physical connection, guess what? Power is not going to flow through the system. Um, and that's what you, you would expect to happen. So it really is uh, helps you with uh, understanding how the system is going to actually work and operate. Going, uh, looking at the battery system in a similar way, as you can see the same thing. Here's the store energy functionality, and you see basically the inputs and outputs going through the functionality of the fuse, which protects from overcurrent and protects for drain overcurrent. <clears throat> and you can see here the generate power flow going through it. You can see then the power of these functional chains uh, through the system because they do give you an idea of all the pieces of the system that are involved. To delivering a certain functionality. The red flow here shows that if any one of these things breaks in the flow, it's, you know, it means it's going to not deliver the, the capability of charging the device. Now, one exception might be the, you, the, the battery right here. We could lose one battery and you'd still have some limited functionality, but you'd definitely have a performance <coughs> impact if that was the case. So I hope that helps you understand the difference between the physical architecture <coughs> and the logical architecture. Um, many uh, engineers feel very comfortable in the logical architecture place. Uh, the physical architecture <coughs> really is getting you much more into the design space. And so it really ends up being the uh, area where you're now focusing to designers that are going to actually go and implement the different parts of the system. And in this case, uh, in the development of this product, <coughs> it was the 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 indication board is, was basically going to be developed by hardware and this was going to be developed by uh, a hardware component also so that's really kind of the the cool aspect of this is that we start thinking about how these things are going to be put together and that's why this uh physical view um is very useful when you insert the pictures because it kind of helps people understand what pieces are going to be developed by where kind of what you know, what technology is going to be used. Here's a photon particle. It kind of shows that we're going to develop something on here. The behavior, though, for this device is being developed by uh, software. So in this case here, uh, the function, the photon particle in this, this point may actually be software that's being used to develop that. So that's going to be the software portion of the system. So you can see how this helps the innovation process because by going through um, these steps, now I've got to the point where I actually know what I have to build and start, can start launching into the different parts of, this, of developing the system. And in some ways know what pieces I can do myself or pieces that I may have to bring other people in to help do or other uh, partners or in this case, uh, you know, experts in to do the different parts that I um, to develop the system. Uh, the nice thing about the solar charger, it was small enough and I had enough background and skills that I could do all the various pieces of it. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, listening to this today's presentation. Uh, and we'll look forward to uh, later phases uh, after this. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, and take care. Thank you.